Yo guys, what up? Welcome. Welcome. This is going to be a replay analysis. If you haven't noticed already in the, in the uh, header, the title of the video. If this is what you wanted to get, well now you got it. Replay analysis. With a Zerg versus Protoss. We're going to be looking at the Zerg today. Number one, Mr. Vlad H. This is a, if I didn't say so already, again, Diamond. Maybe. Didn't say it? Didn't say it? I don't know. But yeah, diamond. Diamond level analysis here, guys. So diamond ZVP. We'll be talking about it. We'll be basically helping Vlad figure out how to do things better than he already is. Or tell him what he's doing that is already good and keep doing it. Stuff like that. And let's get into it. Let's do this. Let's do this. I don't need to follow your camera, but I do want to follow... Or I don't need to follow your perspective, rather. But I do want to have your camera so I can see what you scout. But, let's see what you do. Look at those... Look at that three drone stack on that patch. I'd love it if you moved one over. Look at it. Stare at it. Get used to staring at your drones, guys. Look for a three stack and go, I gotta fix that. You should always look at that and do that. Watch this shit. Watch. He forgot Overlord? No, he's good. He didn't forget it. It's popping out right now. Uh, did he forget Overlord? Let's see. Good luck and have fun. He made a drone. No, yeah, no, he's, he's fine. He didn't forget it. That's what I thought. He's good. Uh, but watch the drones though. See how there's three that automatically split on that patch? In the, in the third patch on the left? See those three drones? The way you can tell there's three drones, if you don't know how to know this, notice this easily, if a drone has minerals in its hand and it turns around and goes back to the hatchery, if another drone is just sitting there the whole time, you have three drones on a patch. You need to fix that. Like, watch, for instance, watch this patch and then watch this patch. No, or, or watch this patch. Just watch the middle patches and you'll notice how these two patches that only have two on it, there will always be like a brief second where the drone is not touching the patch and then it immediately comes back to it again. But on this one, a drone never leaves. And when a drone does leave, a drone is sitting there underneath it and it just like walks off of it. You never let that happen because this is super inefficient. This is not 100% efficiency. These are. This is not. This is like a, a drone that is on a close patch that has three is about point five, uh, like point 0.3 efficiency, like 30% efficiency of what the drone should be worth. And on a far patch, it's like 50% efficiency of what it should be worth. Which means that if it takes a drone two seconds to mine a mineral patch, it's sitting there for one second just waiting. And then it mines it. Like, it's it's not as efficient as it should be. So watch how watch the patches. And you'll notice it. It's much easier to notice than you realize. See how the drone all just sits there? There's always a drone just chilling every time. And now there's three on two patches. There's two pa two or one drone on, th on four patches and three drones on two patches. Obviously, you're not at 16 out of 16 yet, so there can't be two per patch, but there definitely should be a, a drone on this patch and a drone on this patch. Extra. It's it's a big deal. It, 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 like, the more patches you get that have three and the more patches you have that stay with one, it fucks you over second by second by second more throughout the game. Okay, good. That drone fixed itself. Now you have two on this patch. It's you know that almost went to three again. So it's basically GG already. It's not GG already, but it definitely sucks because that's gonna last all game, and it's his developing money of everything. <coughs> Overlord placement's good. <coughs> Follow the probe. You did. I like that a lot. Good shit probe did not if the probe never came out of fog of war he'd be like what is he doing i would definitely say go check over there then but he did so now you know he's not building a pylon or anything like that but the fact that you're kind of checking for it is still good i would say what you should do now is probably reposition the overlord like here for instance again for just a second because you, you, if you go back too far like you are now, now you created this Fog of War over here, which is not what you want to do either. <clears throat> you don't want to have Fog of War over here either. Because for all you know, he could run 
away from you and then go, you know what? I'm actually going to go down here now and do some weird bullshit. Doesn't have to happen, but it could. Because so far right now, you have not confirmed the probe is leaving your base yet. For real. And this Don't go up here. This is not... I would say you need to go back down here. Because you saw... Like, the probe had physically no time to go there. It was impossible. Uh, the only way... The only way a probe could be here right now, which I guess this could happen, is if that dude built a gas. And while it was being built, he lined up two probes on it at the exact same time. He mined the gas with two probes. Like, he mined here, and then he mined here, or something. And two probes perfectly lined on each other. It looked like one probe, but it's really two. And then as he runs his probes into your mineral line right there, so they mineral walk into your base, he grabs one as it goes right there, and he forks it off. That's the only way this could happen. And no one's really going to do this in Diamond, I would say. It could happen, but it, unlikely. But yeah. I think the bigger concern you had is actually to go check the bottom of your natural. <clears throat> because if you actually noticed right now... Oh, shit! He actually built a pylon and now there's a cannon started. Or like it's halfway done. That would be scary. If there was something here really late like that... It's not scary because this is nothing happens here like what would be scary there and now none of it matters it's fine I just think that the this is actually more of a problem location that you need to make sure it doesn't get fucked over okay now you're chilling with your overlord I don't like this necessarily I would prefer you to keep moving into his base and here's why, okay? This is the kinds of these are this is diamond now, so you need to think about shit like this. We're gonna go we're gonna break down scouting, okay? We're breaking down scouting. And this is logically how shit makes sense. So ugh. look at his cyber core and look at his gateway. Neither one of them are doing anything. That means that neither one of them is doing anything with gas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, shit. There was, there was Papa. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was my dad. He was, he was standing there. Okay, I know this is a YouTube video, but we really have to talk about this because I just said this on stream. YouTube people, I'm sorry. I, I just gave an example of my, uh, my dad. When he, uh, if he, if he ever grabs the door, which he doesn't have to do, by the way, because the food, it's like the, the person just leaves the food there so I can grab it. But he'll, he'll do this. He'll like, wait till I acknowledge him. He'll be like, Dan. Dan. Hey. Dan. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you for the food. You can sit down. It's totally fine. I don't mind. He's always so afraid of being on camera. And I always tell him, you don't have to worry about that. It's totally fine. I don't care. But he always does that. He's, I don't know. He'll never change. But it's okay. Dad, yo, Papa, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Papa. Uh, anyways, back to the video, guys. Much love. Thanks for going on that tangent with me. Uh, my dad is so lucky that he brings me the food. He doesn't have to. I never tell him to. He doesn't have to do it. He just does it because he like he doesn't like letting shit sit at the door. Hi, baby. I can't give you no no no. Don't you dare start barking. We don't have food right now. This is YouTube video time. I love you. Don't look sad. Oh no. She usually usually she barks like right in the mic. So she's not barking. That's nice. Uh, but yeah. Um, what's it called? I tell him he doesn't have to worry about it, and he always does. So it's whatever. But. Uh, back to your scouting, okay? Back to the scouting. He's not building anything out of the gateway. He's not building anything out of the core. This is not... The way you can tell is the little gears here on the top, all all six of them, the, the five on the outside and the one, the big one in the middle, they will all start spinning when something happens in the core. And the way you can tell something's being built out of the gateway before it's a warp gate, which it's not a warp gate yet, is the crystal on the top of the gateway will glow... Like, it'll have, like, this, like, light blue glimmer. It's very, like, it's like, uh, like, it's almost like, um, like, cinders coming off of a fire. It's like blue fucking essence coming off of a crystal. It's very fucking obvious when it is building something. It's super obvious. So, the fact that he's got a core, and he's not building anything in either one of them, you know what this makes me think? 
get the fuck in his base and go figure out what he's doing. Because this is either going to be a really fast Twilight Council to possibly do like a DT timing, or it's going to be a really fast Stargate. Doesn't have to be either one of those things, but he's not making shit, which means where is his gas going? He's probably teching really fast into something. Very worth it. it. Very worth it for you to figure that out. So if you don't take advantage of this and you just sit here the whole time, missed opportunity to figure out what he's... Uh, there you go. Now he starts it. Now he's got something in the gateway. Now he's got the, the, the gears spinning. So you can now you can see what they look like when they're producing. So I would say that's a massive missed opportunity. <coughs> uh, now we have... For you, what are you doing? You're going for... A layer. Is this this? If this is B to GM, I uh, I understand it, but we'll see. We'll see what you do. The third base is very interesting. If this is B to GM, like I'm gonna tell you right now, this fast of a third and the layer, they don't really mesh very well together. <clears throat> and again, you are actually diamond now, so uh, we'll s we'll see what you do. We'll come back to your build. I am rem remembering this though. It's not bad. Here's the thing: it's not bad to have a fast third. It's not bad to have a fast layer. But if you do both of them together, you're gonna have a lot of larva sitting there, just like you do. You can't actually do both because it's too expensive this fast. You, the only way you could do a fast third and take a gas. Is if you just get like speedlings or something like that, and then you stop mining gas, like you do a speedling expand, or the only way you can take a fast layer and then actually utilize the layer is if you don't have a third base ridiculously fast like this, and you actually utilize, you know, your layer w when it is there, because what's going to happen right now? It, this this is what's going to happen. You should have if you're going to go for the if if you are going to go to the B to, B to GM style. You should have just maybe delayed the layer just a little bit longer if you're going to go for a ridiculously fast third like this. Because what's going to happen now is if you didn't have a layer started this fast, you could actually utilize your gas in another way. Or, or uh, sorry, you could utilize like the resources in another way. It's not just necessarily the gas. It's like your minerals as well. You could make, uh, you could spin the larva and then you could go into a layer after. And, you know, and... Because you're going to make a layer... Right now, what I see is going to happen is you're going to have a layer that's going to be done. And it's going to do nothing for like 40 seconds. I'll see what you do with it. I'll, I'll, I don't know if you're even going to go B to GM because you're not mining gas anymore anyways. Which looks like a speedling expand. Your build's very awkward right now. It's super awkward. You made another queen. Nice. Our drones are <laughs> now, here's what my opinion would be, okay? I'm actually going to close this tab. I don't want I don't want you to see his production. I don't cuz this is supposed to be deduction and now I know it's a robo. But yeah. Uh th seeing this, okay? Look at look, just th think about this with me for a second if you will, all right? If you have a Protoss who prioritizes tech really fast. But then they also make a lot of gateways. This guy makes 3 gates really early too. What tech do you think this probably is going to be? My guess would be it's probably going to be... And there's three techs, by the way. There's Stargate, there's Twilight Council, and there's Robo. My guess would be it's either one of the tech of Robo or Council, not Stargate. If it was Stargate, he doesn't need to go gateway crazy because he has a Stargate. If he has a Robo or if he has a Council, it is nice to either pair a Robo, like a Prism, with gateway so you can warp in through it. Or it's nice to pair a robo with a mortal because you can actually cut like you don't immortals are not good by themselves. You're not just gonna send like two immortals out alone and have them be alone doing their own thing. They need to be paired with the gateway units, like sentries or a stalkers or whatever, or zeal zealots, anything really. Sentries are really good though, with for that. So he he needs to kind of pair gateway units with a robo. If it's a robo. If it's a council, he kinda needs to pair like, it makes sense because he's going to upgrade gateway units. Hi, baby. Hi. I love you. Yes, I see you. He needs to upgrade gateway units out of the council, so it makes sense to make gateways. So you could already assume he's got either a council or a robo now. Probably not a Stargate. Uh, and yeah, that's what it would be like. And now I would be actually worried, if I were you, about the fact that 
there could be DTs coming eventually, and they're not coming yet. They're not going to be here now, but if someone's going to prioritize either a council or a robo, and he's here's the thing. He's not making gateway units. He's got three fucking gates, but he's making nothing out of them. These are questions that should go off in your head where you're like, what are you doing? Like, why do you have gateways, but you're not making anything out of it? Your B2 GM took me from bronze 3 all the way up to bronze 2.5. Thanks, my dude. Thank you, decal 11 for the 20, and congratulations on the success. That is a whoppingly massive leap. <laughs> Keep it up, bro. You'll be at bronze 2 in no time. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, good on you. <laughs> okay, back to this. I appreciate the 20, though, for real. Thank you. Uh, so... He's not making gateway units, so he's probably, if you think about it, if he's not making gateway units, but he makes a lot of gateways, you can assume what tech he's going to go for, but now he's probably going to really prioritize that tech. So this is when I would be like, okay, well now if he's really prioritizing the tech, maybe it will actually go all the way to Dark Shrine, or maybe he's going to go to like Colossus or Disruptor or uh, lots of Immortals or something. Like he's definitely not prioritizing the gateways. If he's not gonna make, if he's not gonna, if he's not gonna make shit out of the gates or the or the core, he either has a ridiculously large bank right now of not just I don't spend money, I make money but I don't spend it. I just have seven hundred minerals and gas in the bank and I don't even need to use it. I don't care. Obviously, if you think your opponent plays like that, that's probably not Diamond League. That's probably more like silver or bronze. Uh, no offense, decal, but. <laughs> If he does spend it, you you know, there you go. You know he's spending his money. He's obviously not spending it, so you can assume he's using it on his tech. That's what you can probably assume. That's important to know that. It's important to reference that and to kind of pay attention to things like that. This is Diamond. You want to start paying attention to details like this. Now, your build? What the hell is your build? Let's look at your lair, for instance. Your layer finishes at 345. Now, what do you do with a layer since 345? I think you're going to do nothing with it because it does not pair well with a third. Look at your larva. This is why I had the unit tab open. I want to look at it again then. You have six larvae sitting here, seven sitting here. This is unacceptable for Diamond League. This is so much larva doing nothing. You want this shit to be at zero as much as possible. You want to be spinning it as fast as you can. Because whenever you hit this high larva counts like this, you are just larva capping your hatcheries. Like this hatchery is no longer generating larva. It is larva capped. It is not generating shit. This one has two. This one has two. They're both about to cap as well. And now you're capped on all three hatcheries. Or rather, you're, this one's still capped. This one's ca over capped. And this one is uh, about to cap. You're just not spinning larva. And now you're capped. I don't know what you're doing right now. You're not moving the overlord around. I don't know what you're doing, but you're definitely not macroing. It needs to be. You definitely need to macro. Also, also Vlad, thank you very much, by the way, for the uh, the guy we're doing the refund analysis for. Vlad, thank you very much for the three month resub. Hell yeah, vibe tear into me, tear into me, boy. I'm doing it. Thank you very much for the three months. What the fuck is your larva doing, man? You have eleven larva. Holy shit, this is bad. Every second that goes by... So, just... Again, people who don't know this, you need to know this. Zerg players, you need to know this. Larva is not just, I need to have good larva injects. I need to make my queen spin their energy as fast as I can. Yeah, that's part of it. And you can already tell you already missed an inject here as well. This queen has 24 energy, which means in one second you're going to have 25 energy. Which means you, you can inject the hatchery. And guess what? You just injected the hatchery. So you've already missed a full inject here because you're going to have a fully queued up inject that's going to be behind the, the brand new one that just started. That's not good. So you're already missing larva that way. But when you have three larva on a hatchery, when it says three here, okay? This one says three. This one says three. This one says five. If you ever have three or more larva on a hatchery, it stops generating larva. You know how it goes one, two, three. That stops happening. It does not go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The only thing that happens after three is when an eject pops off, it goes to six, and then nine, and then twelve, and whatever. You know, like whatever you have spent, if it's above three, the only larva you get is what pops off of an inject. But guess what? A larva inject gives you three larva all at once, thirty seconds later. 
So it takes three lar three, 30 seconds to make three larva. Automated larva generation is one larva every 10 seconds. And it happens to match larva inject, which is if you have one larva every 10 seconds, two larva every 20 seconds, three larva every 30 seconds, it is the exact same thing as inject. If you do not spend your larva, you actually forego what is equivalent to an inject over time. It It is very fucking substantial. Larva generation, automated larva generation out of a hatchery and larva injects are both only 50% of total larva. Together they make 100. So if you don't spend your larva, you're basically, it's the same thing as not injecting your larva. You're just not getting larva then. You're not generating it anymore and it's really fucking bad. Do not ever let this happen. You need to spend that shit like all the time. 5SD, 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 5SD. It has to keep happening. Now you made your hatchery into a layer and it finished at 345 as well. What is the point of this? That's still nothing has happened and it's 30 seconds later. 345 it finished. 40 seconds later now. Nothing has happened that requires a layer. This is exactly what I said would happen. It's because your layer was ridiculously fast to be paired with a third base. It makes no sense. And now you're making a Roach Warren and an Evo. So now I feel like you're doing some type of a weird version of B to GM to a degree. Because I, I feel like that fast la uh, the fast layer is like, oh, I'm doing B to GM. And then this is your spin on it where you're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a really fast third. Hell yeah. I'm going to take a really, really, really late Roach Warren in Evo Chamber. I'm going to take all my gases at once. This is like a... This is like your spin on Beta Jam is what I feel like is happening. Oh, God. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. My bad. My bad. Uh, but, yeah. I feel like you're doing your spin on Beta Jam. But I'm going to tell you right now, everything you just did is more inefficient than if you would have just gone two base, roaches, and then eventually taken a third base. That would have been more efficient because you would have actually been able to utilize your larva better. And what is the point of taking a fast third? It's to utilize more larva. But you've actually wasted so much larva up to this point that I feel like it doesn't even matter. You're actually behind in larva, even though you have a third, if you would have just taken your third a little later. Because your build was so fucking awkwardly inefficient of having larva sit there so you were not doing any generation for a while. Not, not great. Uh, yeah, I don't like it. Um... You have two ways to fix this. One is what I just said. You just do the standard B to GM. Literally do exactly what I do. Two base, take a third. If you want to fix this and make this more efficient, I've said this before in B to GM where I'm like, yeah, you can take a faster third. Here's how you do it very technically in a way that makes a lot of sense. All right? This is how it's done. What you could have done is you could have stopped mining gas like you did. That was great. That was good. I'm glad that you did that. Do not start a layer. I don't give a shit if your gas is like 112 or like 108. That's fine. You could leave one drone in your gas. I don't really care. That's fine. Take your third base. Spend all your larva. Spend all of your larva. Your injects pop off. You spend your larva. You have a third queen started. You make a creep tumor. You spend your larva. The fact that you also don't have a creep tumor at all is questionable right now too. Like you made no creep. Third queen makes a creep tumor and then goes to inject. And then you can make a fourth queen, like you have now. And the fourth queen could resume creep tumoring all over the place. Once your natural is fully saturated on mineral line, then I would say you could take a layer and take your gas and resaturate it. And then you keep spending all your larva. And once you spend all your larva, once you have then started your layer, you start the layer first, then you start the roach horn and the evo chamber. But again, larva is your priority. So normally what I tell people is when your first inject pops off, Spend all of it, then make the Roach Warren in the Evo Chamber. And your layer gets started as soon as you have 100 gas. So that's, your layer started really early. But with this kind of a style, you go for a fast third. You don't go for a fast layer because it makes no sense. Because you don't have enough money to spend any of it. Like, it, you're, you're fucked otherwise. That's why you're still tied with him in supply at 52, which is really bad. Because uh, you're doing a greedy build. But this is not actually what greedy looks like. Because you're still tied with a guy who's making a shield battery and, you know, mass gates and shit. Like your probe count is and drone count is like similar. It's not good. So, what you could do instead, again as I said before, is 
you, again, the pacing of the other one is of the, the pacing of the two base version where you eventually take a third is you you make a Roach One Evo Chamber right after you uh, spend all of your first larva inject. But with this three base version where it can be modified to a bit better than what you're doing is you could spend all your larva on three hatcheries and then take your Roach One Evo Chamber. Like, get it down to a point where you can afford to go, oh, okay, I can make these two buildings, and I'm not going to have eight larvae sitting there or seven larvae sitting there. I'm going to have, like, three max because it might generate it as I spend those that money on buildings. Not eight, not nine, not twelve. Like, two, three, four. Yeah, okay, and then you immediately go back to spending larvae again as soon as you build these buildings. Larva is a priority. Do not ever let it stack like you have this whole game so far. That's so, so fucking bad for you so bad for you it's actually worse than expanding fast like it, like it, it like it looks like you're doing okay because you have a third base but you're really behind to a two base build right now that would eventually take a third like if you're for instance if your build was fully saturated with gases included and a third base was like 50 percent of the way done and you were making like eight roaches right now and then you're going back in the drones that build would be further ahead right now you would have like 44 drones right now and like uh, you would have like 65, 68 supply right now. Not 52 with 39. So you're definitely behind right now. This build has just been super inefficient so far. Look at your larva. This is your biggest problem, man. Look at that fucking larva. And your supply blocked. I know your supply blocked, but that's still no excuse. That's that's just bad mechanics. Definitely try not to supply block. But the fact that you have ten fucking larva sitting there, it means you've been supply blocked for a while. Like that is this is this is a while. Uh Yeah, this is rough. And you just started an overlord. That is, a, that is an overload just started. You definitely need to get in the habit of looking up here a lot. Definitely get in the habit of looking at the top right section of the screen a lot because shit like this is going to ruin your life. Because now you're having an, uh, an, like an artificial larva cap here where it's not because you just didn't make drones as it was before. Now it's because you just didn't make overlords, which is now indirectly blocking your drones again. So... Try to always have in the drone phase when you're when you have the concept in your head of going, I'm just gonna make drones. I'm gonna make drones. I'm gonna make drones. I'm gonna make drones. Have the concept in your head of going, all right. I'm gonna always try to have like a ten supply cushion plus, like about ten supply cushion. And then when you get into like the roach phase or the hydra phase where you're making something that's more supply heavy, try to have like a twenty or a thirty, roughly like a thirty supply cushion because you're making supply way faster then. And you also have way more larva then because you have more hatcheries because you've already made the drone phase. And then you also have more, like, everything. Just more income, more generation, more production. So having a bigger supply cap is nicer then. But for now, when you're in the droning phase and you're building up to a point, always have, like, a 10 supply cushion, 10 supply cushion, 10 supply cushion. So if you fall in that 10, if you're at 7, 8, 9, 6, 4, overlord, make an overlord, make an overlord. Maybe make two overlords. If you're about to be at like two supply from being blocked, uh, in general, this applies once. Like this concept starts applying a lot once you start saturating your natural a lot. Like once you have like eight drones in your natural, try to keep this concept going. Obviously, your first overlord. I'm not going to tell you to make two overlords when you're at 13 supply. When you make your first one, that's pretty fucking obvious. Like every, everyone understands like the initial build of like 16, 18, 20, or 17, 18, 17. Sh shit, like that's fine. Do that shit normally. But once your natural is done and your natural has minerals on it, start doing this because that is when your injects start becoming into play. That's when you should start following this concept because injects start ramping up your, your larva usage way faster. Like your supply starts ramping up a lot quicker. This is uh, rough for you. Did you just make a shitload of overlords? You just made nine overlords. Now, I would say that's a bit excessive on the overlords. Uh, if you were a supply block like this, I would say maybe make like four. Three or four. 
not not nine is a lot because uh, right now this means your supply is going to just ramp up like crazy to you know like a hundred plus and it's gonna basically this is so much money right now that you can't afford to spend like this and this is also developing bad habits for you if this is just how you do it like a lot like if you this is just your your, your solution all the time to supply blocking this is a worse solution to supply blocking than if you just do the sequence I just said. Like, you have to get good at that. Otherwise, you're always going to have these problems and it's never going to go away and it's always going to make you be behind. So you have to, like, just fix the problem in a, in a better way than this. This is not a good way to fix the problem. Because, you know, this is going to reinforce. I would not be surprised if when the supply that you get available, like 120 or whatever it's going to be, when you're there... I would not be surprised if you forget to make overlords and you supply block again then and then you make another 9 or 10 at that point. <clears throat> if you play like this. This is just reinforcing that you don't ever pay attention to overlords. And your build is also completely skipping the aspect of safety. You're going for roach speed. Or, sorry, you're going for plus one. You're not getting roach speed. And you're totally skipping roaches. You are just 100% skipping roaches. You're modified and you're taking a fourth base too. This drone is literally leaving to go take a fourth base. I already know what it is. It's running up there to, to get ready. Your build is insanely risky. If you play anybody that does any type of pressure to you, you will just die. Safety roaches are pretty important at keeping you alive. And it's not like going all in roaches. It's just like making eight. My biggest recommendation to you would be go look at beta gm style builds hi baby i know you want my my burger look at beta gm style builds and like really start paying attention to like timings of shit because your build is way off in so many ways and i i feel like me telling you just to look at beta gm styles of just zerg games of like beta gm of go look at platinum zerg literally and every build i do will be an example of what you're we're trying to do right now uh and it like that that's worth you know that's so much more information right there than I should explain right now because there's more shit we can talk about here than just that. But I can just clearly see that your build is super off and it's also super unsafe as well. And even though you're being unsafe, even though you're being unsafe, you could you could hit. This is the quota, okay? The benchmark. You should be able to hit 66 drones by six minutes. Or if you're not there. At least very close to it. And you, you should also have like six to eight roaches as well. Six to eight roaches could keep, keep you safe from a lot of things. Uh, five speedless lings are not going to keep you safe from anything. These lings are going to do fucking nothing for you. Like if he shows up with three adepts or four adepts, those lings are just going to be like poof, gone. They're just deleted. Like they're they're garbage. Speedless lings are pretty fucking awful. They're really only useful. They're the only time speedless lings are useful for defense is if you need to use them to defend yourself before your first queens spawn. So like if you get cannon rushed, if you get bunker proxied, if you get uh, 12 pooled, if something like that. Reaper harass. If you don't have a queen yet, that's when these actually are useful. But other than that, at this point in the game now, the only thing these are useful for is actually... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. The only thing that these lings are useful at this point in the game now is to scout, which is kind of what you're doing a little bit. Which even furthermore says that you have literally no defense now at this point. Like, what is your defense? You have nothing, and you're so you're skipping defense, and you still don't even have as many drones as you could have if you still had defense. You could have six roaches and sixty-six drones. At six minutes, and let's see what you hit at six minutes. And you don't even have roach speed started either. Six minutes rolls around, and you have. Your are under it. You have 61 drones and zero defense. This is incredibly risky. You should, you would totally die to a lot of players that you'll run into. Like, any, anyone who actually wants to harass you ever will fucking kill you. Uh, so, yeah, like, this is scary for you. <clears throat> so, yeah, just really, uh, just understand this, okay? Saturate two bases. 
with B because you are doing B to GM style. Saturate two bases. The whole concept of this is saturate two bases. Make six to eight roaches. Saturate your third base. From there, if you see your opponent has a third base, it's a judgment call. You can then saturate a fourth base. Or you can make army up to like 120 supply and then saturate a fourth base and then max out. But either way, once you saturate your four bases, you then max out. I hope that makes sense. Like you never stop joining beyond 80. Like you go to like 80 to 85 and you're great. But you have the choice to either make the drones all, all the way to 80 after three bases. Or you can make some more units just to be safe. And then go back to joining until you're 80 and then max out. That's the only difference. And it's really based off the fact that if your opponent takes a third and he looks defensive... Like, mass batteries and shit. You could be like, yeah, I could get away with making 80 drones right now. That's okay. Or, if he's the kind of guy that doesn't even have a third at all, and you're like, fuck, I'm gonna get two base all in. Maybe you want to be more defensive and safe on three bases. Even though you can still start a fourth base, I don't mind that you start a fourth base. This fourth base timing is totally fine. But be defensive uh, if he doesn't have a third at all, because you'd be getting all in. I hope that concept makes sense. But... Yeah, you're you're the way you're playing it. You have literally no defense at all. So if he did any like if these adepts early game that he made, just walked across the map to harass you at all, you would just die. Like you would take so much damage, and then you you probably then would be like, well, I just lost like twelve drones. I might as well make roaches now to kill those adepts. And you'd make roaches anyways, but then all the drones would be dead. So it's risky. Don't do it in the wrong order where you just make drones and just risk it, risk it, risk it, because you'll always get punished for it. Once you get to a certain point. Like, you're not going to play people that are always going to be passive like this. And your larva is your biggest problem. So, your, your biggest problem is your mechanics. Your mechanics are very under par. Your, your larva usage right now, honestly, is like gold. Gold level your larva usage, I would say. Not great. Uh... The reason why, like, you, you were close to the uh, to the checkpoint I would have wanted you to be at in terms of droning by the by the timer. But the efficiency of your larva was so bad that you did it in a way that was, like, wide open. You were wide open, okay? You were basically a guy who decided it would be a good idea in a zombie apocalypse to walk outside the front door and then just start screaming at the top of your lungs eat me and then you walk inside after 10 minutes later and you know see what happens <laughs> good analogy that's perfect analogy like yeah you, you you should have died is my point like this guy should have punished you for this but he didn't so you got very very lucky uh yeah so and like you still were barely under the par of what is acceptable to for proper macro even though you played a really risky version. And that's just that comes from larva inefficiencies. Which again you're doing right now. You're larva capped. You're larva capped. You're larva capped. On all of your hatcheries. Your biggest core problem. I can already tell what your problem is. And this is your problem. This is, I can already tell this is how you play Starcraft. Okay, You, you go like this. You go zero for your, your hatcheries. And you go like this. Make units. And then you literally do this. Let's make a tumor. Make a tumor. Okay, cool. Let's uh, take a fourth base. Take a fourth. Like, fucking 30 seconds goes by, and then you go like this. Oh, let's make some units again. Like, you make units. You make units in rounds of, like, once every 30 seconds. That is what I am seeing from your play. Because you did the same thing with Overlords. You did the same thing with your, your Larva in general. You make waves of shit. Waves of shit. You don't actually make it one by one by one by one by one. You make it in waves, and that is really bad for Zerg. Because you need to be active on it. You need to be trying to make shit every, like, three seconds. At least. If I looked at your APM right now, I would imagine it's very low. Because you're doing it in waves. You were actually the AFK off the keyboard for a while, over and over and over. You should just be like, 5ST, 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 5SV, 5SV, 5ST, 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 5ST. Like, try to make shit constantly and try to, like, literally be like, look up here, we're good. Look up here, we're good. Look up here, we're good. You make shit in waves way too often, and it's making everything super inefficient. And that's why I was saying as well, I would not be surprised if you supply block again, and then you make another wave of overlords. I actually think that will happen. Because it's showing in your playstyle right now. Because you're just neglecting the whole concept of overlords for the last, like, three minutes now. Because you made nine when you only needed to make, like, two. Or one.
But your creep spread is very under par. Your larva injects are on very, very under par. Like your larva usage is very under par. Like, look, you haven't made a unit again for the longest time. If I hit the units tab right now, I guarantee I'm going to see double digit larva counts. If I hit you, it will be double digit larva. It's 16. This is so fucking rough. This is your problem. Matt, you need to be uptiming your macro a lot more. Like, you just don't... You build shit only in waves. You have to build it consistently. Consistency is your biggest problem. You need to do that more, 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 more. You need to feel like you need to be doing something every second. And if you're not doing something every second, you need to be trying to do something every second. Because you know what will happen? If you have three hatcheries, and if they're not on the exact same timer, this hatchery might... If, if, if a 10-second cycle happens, okay? Every 10 seconds, this larva might spawn a larva on number two of that. Which means 2, 12, 22, 32, 42, 52. This hatchery might be on a 4 second cycle of it. So it might spawn at 4, 14, 24, 34. This hatchery might be on a 7 second cycle. 7, 17, 27, 37, 47. So if you're trying to make a larva every fucking 3 seconds, you're hitting every one of these cycles over and over and over and over. You're not wasting time. But if you just wait, 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 wait. Well, suddenly they all hit the same cycle because they're all capped, which means they all go to fucking zero larva every 10 seconds. Uh, they're not, they're on a cycle of nothing at that point. And then when you make everything in a big round, now they're all back on the same cycle of they all make it at the exact same, at one second, they go, they all make one. So one, 11, 21, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Every 10 seconds after whatever they make. But then you let it cap again and again and again and again, because you're, you're not in the habit of hitting cycles. She's going crazy right now. My dog is freaking out. <laughs> I think someone just came home. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you got to hit cycles, man. You got to macro a lot more efficiently than you are. And like this spire is so early. I don't know. This is the exact same thing I would ask you about the layer with your build. God, I think I definitely make stuff in ways which looks like a big problem. Oh, it doesn't look like it. It is a big problem. You have 22 fucking larva sitting here, man. Vlad, let me tell you something. So larva injects can always be recovered if you do something like, for instance, make a macro hatch. And you just spend your energy on the hatcheries and you eventually get it all spent. You can recover all of your larva over time with larva inject. You will never, however, however you will never recover your larva through automated generation. And I'm going to ask you a question really fast, Vlad. Vlad, I want you to answer this. I just want you to guess a number. How much larva do you think you've missed this game already from automated larva? Like, if, if, if there was, like, a larva sitting here that you could just literally delete and it all just blew up into a bloody mess, how much larva do you think you've missed already to the lack of generated larva that has been capped out? Twenty-two? I would say... So, twenty-two is a lot already, by the way. Twenty-two is a fuckload. But if we if we actually we could figure it out if we take a long time to really add up every hatchery every time you cap out the larva, I would say you've probably missed like fifty at this point, because you have so many wait like so many times of waves of seconds that go by where you do nothing with it. And here's the crazy thing: right now, every ten seconds, four, 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 four. Because you have four hatcheries, which means every 10 seconds that goes by where you're all capped, that is one per hatchery. That is so much larva that is just getting down the drain. Now, let's just check this out. Watch this. Let's go back to when your larva got started getting a little out of control here for this one wave. So right now it's at five. Your hatchery right now has two. It has zero. It has... This one has three already. So let's go back to before this one had three. So, okay. Uh, this one has four again. This one has three. This one has one. This is happening again. And then I went to the previous cycle. It's happening again. Let's just see what you... Let's just let this cycle go through. And when you spend it, okay? You're going to spend it, I, I think, here in a second. You have 11 again. Okay, you spent... You just spent a cycle. That was your last cycle, which we're not even going to talk about. But you were capped on all three hatcheries again for a while. <laughs> but here's the new cycle, okay? The new cycle. It's starting right now at 646. Or really 645, because these units have been in production for one second. So 645. 645. Let's write this down. This is one already. 
So this hatchery, this is going to be hard to remember this, okay? So we're going to write this down on third, 646, and you have one so far. Because I need to know what base it is, too. This is going to be hard to re remember all this. We're just going to do it till you spin your next cycle. Shit. Okay, third, 645, one. This is how much larva on this third base is being wasted already. One larva so far. Because uh, you're, you're still capped here. Now, this base has two. This base has this base now has three. So when did that happen? But you capped out with the other cycle, too. It still has three. Okay, wait, no. So 645, you, you spend, the next wave you spend here. 645 is when you spend it. Okay, so it's not capped. And then it does cap immediately after because you get an inject off. So at... 649, you have three. So natural. Second base. 649. You're capped by one again. And then at your main base, you are two right now, so you're not capped here yet. What about this base? It's not done yet. So your main base, you just spent it. Are you still capped here? You are still capped there. Are you still capped here? You were still capped there. You only spent the larva in your main base. I don't know why that happened, but it's interesting. I don't know why you only spent it in the main. You made two drones. Maybe just select the two drones from your main when you select all your hatcheries. Who knows? But your main base caps out at... Seven oh two. So main seven oh two one. Okay. Now you're still capped here. You are still capped here. You are now capped here. This base is not capped yet. Watch your production. You make nothing for a long time now. You cap out at this base at Here it comes. And right now. Seven eleven. So 711 is your final base. Fourth base. 711. So now what we got to do, I want to type this in the chat. 645, we have to count now count every 10 seconds that goes by until you actually spend a wave of units. And every single 10 seconds that goes by represents one larva, one larva, one larva, one larva, one larva, one larva. Already at this point, just for this wave alone from 645 until right now, this is We'll go to 715 because we'll make it a... Uh... Actually, it doesn't matter. This is already like 655, 705, 715. This is basically like three larvae, essentially. About three larvae. From 649 to 711, this is essentially uh, like, you know, like two and a half. Like, it's really, it really goes to 659, 709. That's two guaranteed. And then like a little bit over two. So like two and a third, two and a fourth. So this is almost three. This is a little bit more than two. So this is pretty much is like five larvae here. And then your main base has missed one already. And you just capped your fourth. So that's already like six larvae or so you've already missed. That's just six out of the last 15, 20 seconds of this game. Or 25 seconds of this game or so. It's a fucking lot of larvae that adds up. So I say like when you said 22 is very low quote. It's a low ball. Like 50 might even be low balling this. Settle down vibe. No, this is fucking important, man. If you want to get better at StarCraft, you have to understand this concept. Because people don't respect Larva. It gets out of hand so fast. Shut up, Bamwich. Let's see when you build units. That's one larva. You just make one larva. That's not going to uncap you on any base. Okay, now you're making more. Do you make a lot more? No. Not really. You spent larva on your fourth base. You did not undercap on your main on your third. You did not undercap on your natural. You did not undercap on your main. You're, you're the only base you went out of larva cap on was your third base. Okay. Are, are you? Hold on. 
When you make, I have a question for you, Vlad. Or it's certainly a question. It's more of a, a it's more of a fact. When you make drones, are you going like this? When when you do it, are you going? Don't do that. If you're doing that, you should do this. That's it. You hold the button down, and when you hold the button down, it goes. It just makes all of them really fucking fast. It's rapid fire. I am holding it though. I, you're making them so fucking slow if you're holding it. Like, look at this. You make a drone at 741. If you're holding the button down at 742 or 7... Depending on the repeat delay of your keyboard. At 742, if it's fast, all your larvae should be spent. If you're not, if you repeat, if your repeat delay on your keyboard is not fast, 743, all of it should be spent. Repeat delay, guys, just so you know, every keyboard can do this. What I just did right there. But this is what repeat delay represents. If you have slow repeat delay, this is what happens when you hold the key down. The initial, where it goes, are we repeating it? Yes, we are. Or it goes like this. Are we repeating it? Yep. Like really fast. Like... If you if you have 20 keystrokes, okay, keystroke 2 to 20 is always going to be super fast, the same speed. It's Repeat delay only represents how fast the keyboard is going to spam it out from key 1 to 2 stroke, like keystroke 1 to 2. Because it's going to recognize that you're actually wanting to repeat it. So, that is how it works on a keyboard. Now, look at the drone. It was made at 741. Now, watch this. It's only one drone. 743, a second drone starts. And then two more drones start after that at 744. And now three more drones start at 744. And at 745, 746, 14 drones. Now now it's up to 14. This is not... This is literally... I feel like you're letting go of the key. You have to be. There's no fucking way. Because look at this. Watch the... Watch, I'll give you an example right now live. So this is fast repeat delay. I'm holding it down right now. Okay, watch. Right now. Super fast, super fast, super fast. Now check this out. I will literally go to my control panels, oops, and I will change my repeat delay right now in front of you, and I will show you what it looks like if it's on the slowest possible. So it's fast, repeat delay is fast. I turn it down to super slow, I hit apply, and now watch how every key after the first two goes fast. See how it still goes fast? It's just the initial one to two is the slow part, but the rest still go really quickly still. It's still really, really, really fast. It's just the initial key. So if it, the drones are spacing at like two, three, seven, two, seven, that's you have you have to be letting go of the key. Either that or your keyboard sucks dick and it's like not registering. You're holding it down. It has to be that way. It's it it doesn't make the, the keyboard repeat delay doesn't pause in the middle of it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. The point is, though, is finally now, like, you're again, you're still capped on this hatchery. You are s not, you are now not capped on this hatchery. You are still capped on this hatchery. Do you make any more? Okay, you just undercapped here. The, all your hatchery is now undercapped. You just made a round of 14 drones and 9 hydros. You still have 3 larvae there, but we'll give it to you at 749, okay? So at 749, you have missed 6 larvae on your main. You have missed... Six larva on your natural. You have missed uh, five, uh, almost five. We'll say four. It's like really ab about. To, it's like four and like ninety percent or eighty percent of the fifth one. We'll say we'll just say four. We'll be, I'll, 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 I'll average out the remainder on the last hatchery. Four on your other hatchery, and then your final hatchery of your fourth base, uh, seven eleven. That is like about. It's a little bit under four, but now we'll just say four because we went way under five for the last one. So this is how much you missed for this last round of larva you just wasted, you just sat on. This one round alone, you have missed out on 20 larva. Just this one round for the last minute of the game. This is just one minute. Because every hatchery generates a larva every 10 seconds. It adds up really fucking fast when you go to four bases that are all capped out. This is why people need to understand 5SD is so fucking important. It is ridiculously important. So you really need to get you really need to get out of the habit of the cycles of shit of just like making shit in waves. 
And going back to the exact thing I talked to you about before. Do you remember how I said when you made nine overlords you would supply block? The only reason why there are three larvae still sitting there is because you're supply blocked. So you have once again supply blocked. And you just made nine overlords last time. So I imagine this time you're going to make nine or ten again. You are doing shit in cycles way too much. And you need to, you need to do it efficiently. Like... Keep it just flowing the whole time. 5SD, 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 make Overlord. 5SD, 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 make Overlord. 5SD, 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 make Overlord. Don't make <laughs> Overlord. Wait on it, wait on it, wait on it, wait on it, wait on it. <laughs> make a drone wave. Like, it's just way too cycle heavy. It's... Your macro is not diamond level right now. Your macro is, honestly, this is like gold level macro. This is not that hard to fix, though. But what I am seeing right now, I would say this is like gold level. Like, you will get fucking crushed in diamond level. If your opponent does anything to you. Your macro is definitely under par. Your creep spread is also very low. Your creep spread needs to be a lot uh, more like active too. Like, you just need to have... Basically, what you need to do... Vlad, this is, the, this is the perfect advice I can give you. What you need to do is you need to start having sequential tasks that... You already have the mindset to a degree where you're doing shit in waves, but instead of macroing in waves, just do tasks in waves. So like for instance, when you inject, don't just do one inject, do all your hatcheries. When you when it's time to inject, you do all injects. When it's time to spread your creep, all your creep tumors. When it's time to check an upgrade, check all your upgrades. When it's time to check your drone lines, check all your drone lines. Do those types of things in massive waves of a task. Okay? Do that shit like that. But when it comes to macro, that is the only task that you need to do all the time. So what you do, the way to, the way to do this is every time you do a task, alternate it with macro. Task, macro. Task, macro. Task, macro. Task, macro. I'm going to do injects. I'm going to make my larva. I'm going to do creep spread. I'm going to make my larva. I'm going to check my upgrades. Make my larva. I'm going to make fucking tech buildings. Spin my larva. I'm going to inject again. Spin my larva. I'm going to check my mineral lines. Spin my larva. You literally alternate it with every fucking task you do. I'm going to expand. Spin my larva. It doesn't take very long to spin your larva. Especially if you're doing it all the time. Because you're not going to have to spin 20 of them. You're going to have to spin 2 of them. Or 3 of them. Or 1 of them. Spin your larva repeatedly. All the time. Every task alternates larva, 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 larva. If you do that, every time you spin your larva, when you make the task of spinning a larva, always do this with your eyes. Look at the top right of the screen. Go, go look up there. Look up at the top right of the screen and go like this. Larva, do I have enough to spin it? Every time. And if the answer is yes, it means you have a cushion of supply to work with. If the answer is no, you're about to block, make an overlord. Every time you spin your larva, so task... You do task, then you do larva, look at your supply. Task, look at larva, look at your resources and supply. Task, larva, look up here at your resources and supply. Get in the habit of doing that, and eventually, you're not going to look at it every single time, but you're going to make a habit of looking at it often enough to not fuck yourself over. Do that. That will make you a thousand times better. The fact that you've already gotten to Diamond League playing this way, if this is how your average game looks is uh like if you just clean up your macro you're probably gonna get the fucking masters because there must be other aspects that are redeeming about your playstyle that can cover cover you because up to this point it has definitely been it's not even like that bad it's just it could be so much better it's really risky though is what it really is like you played a fucking risky playstyle like you could have died to anything early on Now look at your larva during this fight. Pause it really fast and let's look at your hatcheries. <coughs> it's injected. Your larva is being spent. This is good. It's not injected, but your larva is being spent. It's injected. And your larva is being spent. Yeah, mostly good. On this, this exact moment in this game right now. Mostly good. Not bad. You're actually macroing during a fight. And now, now, the thing is, now it actually does get kind of made a little bit more in waves. Because when you max out, you're only really going to be able to re-max out again when your army starts to die. And it's going to probably die in waves of like hundreds of supply or fifties of supply. 
Like, tens and tens and tens of supply are gonna die all at once. So you're making, like, lots of shit all at once. But then when you max, you stop macroing for a while again. In terms of, like... I'm not gonna tell you when you're at 200 supply to still be going 5SD, 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 5SH, 5SH. No, obviously don't do that when you're maxed. But you could do that when you know a fight is starting to happen. You could then do that and then spend your larva as it drops, as it drops, as it drops. That's totally fine then too. But you just don't do it when you're maxed. I feel like you're getting in the phase of where you're maxed out and then that's how you're playing all game. Don't play like that all game. That's definitely not a good way to develop. But yeah, the early game for you is a fucking mess. If you fix that, seriously, it was so much better. The early game is a massive mess for you. Also, really connect the, your bases to creep as well. This needs to be... What, once, you get to a, once you get to a point where your bases are connected with creep, this needs to be part of that. Don't ever just neglect this. Because this will make your life so much easier uh, later on when you play against like Masters players. <coughs> because Masters players are going to do shit like Prism harass you and stuff like that. Vibe, you're being cruel. No, I'm being honest. He wants improvement. I'm, t I'm giving him... I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, he, he wanted me to be honest with him. I'm not being mean. Just being honest. He has lots of potential if he just cleans up his early game. It's not even that hard. Like, he's actually... The worst aspect of his play is the easiest part of the game. So far that I've seen. It's so fucking easy to just open well. It's not even hard. It just means you know, you just need kind of... All you need to do is know what you're doing. You just need to understand, oh, okay, I need to actually build drones. Cool. That's it. Alright. Con conceptually, I disagree with your, your choice of making lurkers versus disruptors because disruptors counter lurkers. Uh, I don't agree with this choice. But... We'll see what you do with it. But it is bad. Uh, lurkers are like... It's like rock, paper, scissors. And you're allowing him to have the rock to your scissors right now. It's a, a Disruptor is a hard counter to a, to a lurker. Uh, the fact that you have a spire. I would say that would... Pr I, and you're, you're diamond, so you can handle it. I would say what you should do if you saw disruptors like that. Just start weapon up, weapon upgrading your mutas. And just switch out of hydras into like pure mutalisk and zergling. And that would be so much better than going into lurker. Or just go fucking Hydras and just all in all day. The fact that you're making Lurkers also shows me you're going to try to micro this. And trying to micro against Disruptor, I see you... All I see is going to happen is you're going to walk over there. He's going to blow your ass up. You're going to be like, well... Shit. That sucked. <coughs> and you're making a lot of, just, of Lurkers too. You know, the other reason why this is not good is because Lurkers are so gas expensive that you're not going to be able to remax. The only thing you can remax on is Zergling now. And uh, if you get destroyed in a fight, Zerglings aren't going to save you. Zerglings are good buffer and good harassment tools. They're not really good death ball tools. And straight up army. And now he's got DTs. You just have no detection. There's a lesson learned. Always bring an Overseer every time you push against anything. No matter what race it is, that way you can kill Widow Mines, DTs, or Lurkers of your opponent. Never push Detectionless. I didn't even say that, but I'm glad that he punished you for that because you should never, ever push without an Overseer. Ever. Always have an Overseer. Because all that just did right there is if there even potentially ever was a window to kill him right there, he just bought himself like a full minute again right there. He just bought himself a full minute by doing that to you because you're like, I'll go home now and then I'll come back later. And now suddenly my window of time for my hydras to be effective has now gone down again. It's now lower. Mutation. Mineral field depleted. Also, <coughs> the second you see DTs, I like that you're making static D. I, however, strongly dislike how you're placing it. Put it in your mineral line. Space it, gap it, gap it so it doesn't, like, don't completely wall it together. Put gaps between it, but like a spore, a spine, a spine. Do it in your mineral lines. Do not do it in front of your mineral lines. And here's the reason why. If a DT, like especially this space over here, if a DT just walked like this, he could kill your drones out of range of the spine crawlers. 
So don't ever do that. Always put it to cover the drones better. And then here's another thing too. If he had like two adepts over here, or like a stalker that just randomly walked by over here and held position behind the mineral line, again, you're out of range to cover your mineral line. You're out of range to cover the drones. You want the spines to have good range of, of uh, coverage, like one spine could be in that kind of coverage, and the opposite could be there. You want spines to cover the drones, not cover the front of the hatchery. And then cover only a little bit of the drones in the back. And same thing with a spore. You want a spore to be in the center. That way the spore covers the whole mineral line from uh, like an oracle. Or something. Random bullshit. So now, just keep in mind when I what I uh, what I expect is about to happen is he's going to throw disruptor shots at you, and you're gonna your army's gonna blow up. That's what I think will happen. It's gonna be rough. Now, really quickly, are you macroing at all during this? No, you are not. This is another reason why I don't think lurkers are always the best choice. Because lurkers against an army that sucks ass against it. Like, if lurkers are not fighting disruptors, for instance. You can burrow the lurker and then kind of just forget about it and go back to macroing. You don't have to spend as much time on your lurker. But lurker versus disruptor is very high attention de to detail. Like, you have to babysit the lurkers then, otherwise they all die. And what is happening while you're babysitting your lurkers? You're not fucking macroing at all. You stop. You just stopped injecting. I don't mind that you're maxed out on uh, supply and you have a lot of larvae right now. But 20 is not a remax. This number, when you do a push like this and you have 6,000 fucking minerals and 2,000 gas, 20 should actually say like 60. It should not say 20. Like you've just stopped macroing at this point. Also, you, you stopped on four bases too. You need to expand. You need to maintain 80 to 85 drones. You did not do that because you made static D and you never replaced it. Also, you never expanded when your base mined out. You should have a fifth base started when this mines out. You should have a sixth base started when this mines out. You should have a seventh base started when this mines out. You should be on seven bases right now. And you're on, well, you're on five. You started this one. You're on five. You should be on seven. You should be expanding every time a base mines out. Like start mining out. Take another base. Take another base. Take another base. Your expansion timings are very delayed. Mines out. Yeah, when patches start to mine out. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Not the whole base. The whole base mines out very slowly. But the point is, is you're going to have very fucking bad efficiency if you have a good drone count, which you're a little under right now, and you don't expand again. I'm scared of taking bases because of zealot run buys. You know what that tells me? It tells me your creep spread sucks, Dick. Because you know what happens? If you do, if you have good pacing of macro, a good correlation to that is good pacing of creep spread, and your creep spread should be in front of your hatchery before you take it. You should not be doing this where you expand blindly in the middle of nowhere. Your creep spread is under par. As we like, look, it's worth 13 minutes of the fucking game, and your creep has not moved once on this spot. That is fucking terrible. You could have made this, you could have had creep spread this fast 12 minutes ago. Or, okay, just kidding, not 12. 11, like, 11 and a half minutes ago to 10 minutes ago. Somewhere in there. This could have been made that early. This creep tumor at 13 minutes could have spread like this. Boom, 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 it's, your creep spread is non-existent. So your creep spread definitely needs some work. Like, look at the other tumors. These tumors were made, and they haven't moved at all since then either. You haven't even connected the main and natural yet. Your other tumors over here that did connect, you went this way, like tumor, tumor, tumor. Tumor, tumor. You have random tumor there, and like a random tumor over here blocking your hatchery. Like These tumors are nothing. This is basically no creep spread. This amount of creep could be done. All of the, all of the creep you have right now, this could have been accomplished by like five minutes in the game. Seriously. Like five minutes.
So your opponent is freaking out. And he's not really using disruptors the best. He's diving into he's diving into lurkers to shoot shots. A lurker has ten range. A disruptor has like fifteen or fourteen range. He does not have to dive into it. Uh, so he's definitely missing the beat on that a little bit. But again, disruptors are going to hard counter you, and like it, you know, if he uses them correctly. <clears throat> and uh, yeah. So, Lurkers aren't a horrible choice, but they're not a, the better choice. I would say there's better options for you. Because, again, look at your supply right now. This is what this is the problem with Lurker, I would say, most of the time. You're babysitting them so fucking hard. You lost a chunk of Hydras, like, 10 seconds ago. The blood has already disappeared on the screen. It was, like, maybe, like, 20 seconds ago. You haven't replaced them yet. You're not macroing at all. Your Queens probably all have 200 energy. Or getting close to it. Like, they're not doing anything. You're... 100% ignoring your base. You're ignoring your creep. You're ignoring everything. And you're just focusing on the fight. And you're going to do this the whole time until your army dies. The have this is not good play. This is this is play that will always make you feel like you'll never beat someone who's better. You just macro. That you, you, need to, you need to... Okay. Good shit. You need to do that so much more often. When you set up your lurkers like this, every time you need to do that. Every single time. You need to go back and follow up with some macro, 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 macro. I'm glad you, you actually did it now. I thought you were going to do it the whole time. I'm good. Like, the, the way you just did it, that's good that you understand that. Do that more. But now, you have to realize, too, when you do that, you need to be kind of fast about it. You need to have a goal in your mind where you go like this. I'm going to go back to my base and inject my bases. Stop. That's it. Stop after that. Don't. Do shit like, don't do every cycle. Don't be like, okay, I'm going to eject my bases. I'm also going to spread some creep. I'm also going to make more spine crawlers. I'm also going to check my mineral lines. Like, if you're going to look back at your base for like a solid 30 seconds or 20 seconds, that is way too much time to have your army over here. If you were going to look at your base for like 30 seconds, what you should do, up burrow, run away. And as you're running away, do your macro cycles. If you're going to stay here in his fucking face... Do not do it for too long. Do what's really important, which is inject, 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 inject. Come back to your army. And then once you realize, I have another like five seconds to sit here and not be worried for the next five seconds or so. Inject, 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 inject. Come back again. <laughs> Our army be scrapped. Your forces are under attack. So, I'm going to see where your camera goes. Okay, and I want to see what you do to react to this. But here's the perfect way you could react to this. All you have to do is go like this. Drones, green box, right click. Make Hydras, Rally Point Hatcheries right there. Sack this base while you have taken over his third. His probes die. Your drones stay alive. And your units that are dying in the fight right now over here get replaced over here. And if you have enough larva because you've been injecting, you will remax and have a brand new wave of Hydras that can easily kill this. That's what you should do right now. So you notice it's happening, and your go-to was to make a spine crawler and look back at your army, which means you're going to lose all your drones now, and you're not making hydras. Okay, what are you actually making? You, you are actually making, just kidding, you are making hydras. You made hydras and a spine, but you didn't run the drones. The drones were kind of nice to run there if you would have just ran them away. Like, this is irrelevant right now. You've already won the fight here. This is irrelevant to look at this. What you should do is, like, A move your whole army right now, right here. Just A move it, like, right there. And then right click your overseers. And then right, like, click your overseers. And then maybe right click a Hydra. 
Or just put it like right here on oversight mode. Or just something. Just put them nearby your hydra so they can see DTs. And forget about it. And focus on your macro. Because right now, this is important. This is important. This is important. The drone dead bodies were important. Getting a new base. Like you could have literally taken all your drones, sent them all down to here. Sent one drone like this. Take one drone out of it. Have it go down this way. Go down. Around. Back up. Re-expand. Because you know what these zealots are going to do the second they kill this base? They're going to walk right there. Down. Here. So if your hydras were made and they caught the zealots here. And then your new drone that came back around this way. Just rebuilt this base. You just recovered this. And why do you have time to do all of this? Because this is irrelevant. You've already won the fight here. This is This means nothing now. You don't need to worry about this shit anymore. God, if my army would have gotten blown up there, what should I have transitioned into? It's it's not even about the fact that you have to transition. You just know you don't, you don't have to transition if you can starve your opponent out. That's not... I don't want you to think about StarCraft the way where you have to go... Shit, I have to transition every time. The fact that you went into Lurkers versus Disruptors is bad, in my opinion. That is good for Protoss. Don't do that. I would say don't do that, specifically. If you wanted to transition, you could go anything you wanted to. But you don't have to transition if your opponent is starving. Because when your opponent is starving and they have no economy, which he does not. Look at his income right now. It's fucking garbage. Because why is that? His base is mining out. His base is mining out. His only act, the other base that was mining out has been killed. He has no good income right now. His income sucks ass. If your opponent's income sucks ass, you can make the wrong unit versus what he has and still win the game. Because you just overwhelm him and kill him. If your opponent, however, was very rich and had a lot of money and your army just, you didn't even kill the third, he had a fourth base. He was like mining like 3,000 minerals a minute. He was looking solid. He had disruptors. And he just decimated you with fucking uh, Archon, Immortal, Zealot, Disruptor. I'd be like, just make fucking mutas. Just make mutas. Or you could make fucking hydras again. Just base trade his ass. You can make broodlords there. There's a lot of things you could make. But Lurkers are not good only because of the fact that he had Immortal and Disruptor. Disruptor are going to kill the Clump, and Immortal are going to kill the Remnant of whatever, whatever's left. Composition isn't really the most important thing you should worry about, though. Because apparently, like, you didn't give a shit about it, and you won the game anyways. See how important it is? What you should worry about is efficiency, and your build could be so much more efficient. Imagine if your creep was like this right now. And you were just suffocating him. And imagine if your goal, instead of just doing suicidal pushes in the fog of war, being, I hope I win, what if your pushes were designed in a way where you starve him out, you kill this base, and you starve his ass, and then you consume the bases with creep. You literally roll creep over his base, and now you have a more easily fortified position because fighting on creep is so much more effective than not fighting on creep. Because hydras can now suddenly kite and disruptor shots so easy. And shit like that. Like, they can't even get touched ever by disruptors. Like, there's a lot of options you had. You just kind of didn't really... You kind of just, like, dropped the ball on macro a lot this game. And if you if you pick that up and you fix that, your play will be a hundred times stronger. <clears throat> but, yeah. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, like, again, Mutas could be an amazing choice here, too. You could just, if he's already starving, you could just go into his base further and just wipe out his economy. You could do one round of Mutas. Like, of, like you could go max Mutas, or you could make, like, 15 Mutas. Wipe out all of his probes, and if your Mutas die in the process of doing that, and he, his income goes from 755 down to just 55, because he's got, like, two probes running a mineral patch, and that's it. Uh, that's, that's great. That, that's not bad for you, because you could just... Remax Hydras or whatever you fuck anything anything you want to make at that point like it comes back to the point to where it's, it comes down to like efficiency right if your opponent cannot efficiently use his production it doesn't matter what he has if he's only got like a hundred supply of anything and he can't replace it because whatever dies is just dead and you have 200 supply again 
You can make the wrong thing and still win. Because you just overwhelm him then. Macro efficiency. You need to do it more. All the ways we talked about already. If I if I say it again, I'm literally just going to repeat myself again. But hell yeah. Honestly, that was exactly the kind of coaching I was hoping for. It's easy to lose sight of mechanics, so it's great to have you point everything out. It means I can get better and enjoy the game more. Thanks so much, Vober. Oh, Vlad, thank you very much for the extra five tip on the end, man. Much love. And I wish you the best of luck <clears throat> in your games in the future with, you know, how it goes. But much appreciated, man. And, uh, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this, too. Thank you for watching. I hope, uh, you know, like, obviously, we were pretty uh, blunt here with things you can work on. But I hope it helps you guys, too, if it's something you do as well. You can take note from that and try to make your own play better. But thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, good luck. Take it easy. And have fun. Peace, guys. Go crush. Go crush Protoss. Bye.